Hey, this is Dr. Marisa, women's hormone expert, author, and the host of the Essentially You podcast. And today, I want to share the three most common signs you're experiencing a blood sugar spike and crash. Now, the reason why this is so important is that most of us have no idea that this is happening to us at least once every single week. I'm talking about over 90% of us are experiencing blood sugar spikes and crashes throughout the week, and no one's telling us. Like, we don't run labs to look at this enough to know what's going on, honestly, until it's too late. Now, if we have a lot of blood sugar spikes and crashes, and we have crazy glucose variability that leads to diabetes, insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease, and a lot of other chronic conditions as well. Well. So it's important to get a good sense of what's going on, even if you don't have a CGM or a glucose finger stick. You can still know and make changes based on the three signs that I'm going to be talking with you about. Now, the reason why I can relate so much to these three signs, and I think it's so important to know this, is that for years, probably well over a decade, I was pretty much on a blood sugar roller coaster every single day. I mean, I started my morning with sugar in my coffee, a kind bar, and then off to the races and having a sugary snack at 2.30 in the afternoon because I was craving something to get through the day. And I just kept perpetually feeding the blood sugar spike and crash all day long, every single day for a very, very long time. And it's had a major impact on my health overall for the last several years. So what I want to do is I want to get super clear about the three signs and then don't think I'm gonna leave you hanging with just the three common signs. I'm gonna give you some incredible hacks that you can begin to use that can make a huge difference in creating stable blood sugar levels throughout the day so that you not only feel great, but that your body is doing great. So without further ado, let's dive into the three most common signs. Number one is you are hungry. Now, I don't know about you if this has ever happened where you have breakfast, maybe it's oatmeal or it's an English muffin or it is a vanilla latte on the go. And then around 11 o'clock in the morning, you are starving. Like you can't even make it to lunch. And then it happens again at like two or three o'clock. And then it happens again before dinner. And then it happens again at late night as a late night snack, right? You are just chasing that blood sugar spike and crash, leaving you hungry a lot throughout the day, wondering, why am I so hungry all the time? That's number one. Number two is that you experience killer cravings. Again, often it's right before lunch. It's two to three hours after lunch. It is right before dinner. It is after dinner with that late night snack, right? You just find yourself having these cravings that come out of nowhere. Oftentimes it's because we are rebounding from that blood sugar spike and your body is getting signals from leptin and ghrelin that it is time to eat again and it's time to eat something carby or sugary. And then the third one is going to be lagging energy. Energy. This is whether you are waking up tired, just not rejuvenated in the morning, or you just hit a wall after lunch. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. I used to hit massive walls around 2 o'clock, 2.30, and honestly, it felt like I was crawling to that sugary snack or to that Starbucks to get a vanilla latte. So these are the three most common signs that your body is reacting in a very reactive type of way to a blood sugar spike and crash. Now, I want to give some recommendations for what we can do to actually get more stable blood sugar. And I've got some hacks that are literally going to change your world, going to change the way that you eat, going to change your energy levels, going to change how you feel throughout the day. Now, the first one, probably one of the most important things that you can do is start your first meal, your breakfast, what, no matter when you stop fasting, with a savory meal. So think leftovers, but you want to focus on good quality protein, healthy fats, and fiber from from veggies. Yep, I want veggies at every single meal. I want fiber at every single meal because fiber helps to slow down the blood sugar response. That's going to be super important. Often when we have a muffin or we have a croissant or we have a mocha latte for breakfast, it sends a mega blood sugar spike because it's the first thing we've had at the beginning of the day. It sets the tone for the rest of the day. And when we have that first spike, it takes up to 48 hours to recover from that. So that croissant and that coffee that you had with some sugar, I'll tell you what, you are going to most likely experience a blood sugar spike and crash, and it's going to set the tone for the next 24 to 48 hours. And even if you have other meals that are very focused on the protein, the healthy carbs, and the fiber, you still may even spike because of what happened at breakfast. So if there is one major shift I recommend is just shifting your breakfast to leftovers from the night before or a protein shake, something that's going to really deliver and slow down a blood sugar response to keep your blood sugar happy throughout the day. The next one is going to be make sure that you start your meal with 
fiber, with veggies, with salad, with roasted veggies, whatever it may be. Because what I love about fiber is once it hits the small intestine, it actually slows down the ability for sugar to get into the bloodstream. Again, creating a more stable glucose level throughout the day. So if you can start every meal with a veggie or a salad, you are going to set yourself up for success. Next, I recommend eating your foods in order. So again, a plate of veggies or a salad, then go to protein and fats, and then at the last part of that meal, have the carbs, right? Have the brown rice or the quinoa or have the sweet potato or roasted potatoes, whatever that may be, because you have slowed down the glucose response, the blood sugar response, by eating those other foods first and then having the carb. Next, if you are gonna have carbs, which carbs are phenomenal, always dress them with protein, fiber, and fats. This is gonna significantly slow down those carbs from hitting the bloodstream too fast and causing a glucose spike. Number five, this is probably one of my favorites, hands down, I do this one all the time, pretty much every single day. Go for a 20 to 30 minute walk after your meals, and if you can only slide in one walk, always do it after dinner. Dinner, because we are more insulin resistant at night because of our circadian rhythms, our body's just on the wind down mode. When we have dinner, we are more at greater risk of having a blood sugar spike. But if you can go for a walk within an hour of eating that meal, you will significantly blunt that blood sugar response and most likely not spike at all. Plus, you get a connect maybe with your partner or your dog or just have a nice little nature walk. This is one of my favorite things to do. Also, so it doesn't have to just be walking. It can be a number of activities that you're doing, but just as long as you're moving your body, you are going to help blunt that blood sugar response. Next is have dessert after a meal. Don't have dessert at breakfast. Don't have dessert as a snack. Have it after a meal for the same reasons why you want to have carbs at the end of a meal. If you have that dessert after a meal, you are going to slow down that blood sugar response. And then if you can go take a little walk right after that dessert, mm, you're probably going to blunt that response entirely. And then the other two I love as bonuses, one, drinking a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in like a little cup of water will help to blunt a blood sugar response by 30%. So definitely doable before any meal, especially it's going to be pizza or it's going to be tacos or, or nachos or whatever it may be that's got like a high carb count or maybe it's waffles for breakfast. If you do a little apple cider vinegar, it will blunt that blood sugar response. And then the other thing, if you're not a big fan of vinegar <laughs> before a meal, you can also do berberine. So berberine is phenomenal. It will spike a blood sugar. It'll reduce a blood sugar spike by over 35 to 40%. I actually have a supplement in my essentially whole line called glucose support, and it has the exact amount of berberine that you need along with other powerful herbs that will help blunt a blood sugar response, not only during a meal, but after a meal, and also will help to create more insulin sensitivity. So those are just some hacks that you can begin to implement as you start to make those changes. The ones that have made the biggest difference for me is one, walking after meals because I love it and I watch it in real time because I wear a CGM, exactly the response my blood sugar has. Two, eating a savory breakfast every single day and then always starting my meals with a big salad first so that I can really slow down the blood sugar response from the rest of my meal. Now, just note that what's really important here is that you are doing things that feel good for your body and you're implementing changes that help to create great metabolic flexibility and help to not just hype up those three signs that I talked about, right? None of us want to feel hangry. None of us want to have killer cravings. None of us want to have lagging energy. And these are the types of hacks that can really set you up for success. So if you have found this information helpful or supportive, be sure to subscribe for more tips on how to optimize your hormones and your body. Until the next episode, have an amazing day.